In this video, we're solving a projectile motion challenge problem that I recently put on a quiz for my engineering majors. So in the problem, we have a projectile launched with a given speed of 30 meters per second, and is launched toward a ledge that's 12 meters high and sits 40 meters away from the launch point horizontally. Now what we're asked for is a bit of an unusual question. We want the range of launch angles for which the projectile is going to land on top of that ledge. So to get this problem set up, it's critical that you're able to visualize why there's a range of launch angles where the projectile is going to land on top of that ledge. And I went ahead and just wrote a Python animation today to illustrate what I hope is going on in your head as you're struggling to understand the problem and set it up. So in the animation, we're sweeping from a launch angle of zero degrees to a launch angle of 90 degrees and just watching what happens to the trajectory of these projectiles. And we notice as we start sweeping through these angles, we get to this special angle where our trajectory puts the projectile right on the upper left corner of that ledge. This is the cut line where angles bigger than that are going to put the projectile onto the ledge. So prior to that, our projectile shots were just running into the ground or running into the face of the ledge, and now we're on top. So now we see what's gonna go wrong if we get to angles that are too steep. Our landing points are starting to sweep back to the left, and eventually we get back to that same special point, the upper left corner of the ledge. This is the cut line where any angles bigger than this are gonna send the projectile back down and hit the face of the ledge or hit the ground all the way to the left of the ledge. So this was the key visualization to the problem, being able to see that there's a minimum and maximum angle that puts you right at that upper left corner. And those are going to be the bounds of this range that we're trying to find to solve the problem. So there's those two special trajectories drawn into the slide now. And now we're able to start doing some physics. So for projectile motion, we're going to split our motion into horizontal and vertical parts. There's a space for the horizontal analysis and a space for the vertical analysis. And remember, the horizontal analysis will be something like this. We're going to assume the origin is at the original position of the projectile, by the way. So we have x equals x naught plus v naught xt. And our initial x position, because we're going to put our origin over here, our initial exposition is zero. So we're trying to find like the launch angles that put the projectile right at that upper left corner of the ledge. And that's a final X coordinate of 40 meters. So I have 40 is equal to V naught X times T. Well, V naught X is 30 cosine of theta. All right, so there's one equation. Then we look at the vertical analysis. So in the vertical direction, we have our standard Y equals Y naught plus V naught Y T minus one half GT squared. And our final y position for either one of these trajectories is going to be 12 meters. Our initial y position is zero again, because we put our origin at the original position of the projectile. And v naught y, the y component of that original velocity is going to be 30 sine theta. So I have a 30 sine theta t minus one half gt squared. Now we've already gotten numbers into these equations, so we may as well put the number for g into the equation. We're just going to use 9.8 for that, and half of that is 4.9. So I have minus 4.9 t squared. All right, so then what are we supposed to do with this set of equations? This is actually a familiar situation that we've seen in a couple prior problems. We can solve for the t in that equation and then sub that value of t into the second equation. That's going to create an equation where the only unknown is theta, which in principle we can solve and we'll get our range of angles out of that. So if we take that horizontal equation and solve for t, that's going to be 40 over 30 cosine theta, but I'd rather write it as 4 over 3 cosine theta, just canceling a factor of 10. And then we're going to sub that in to the second equation, and we end up with 12 equals 30 sine theta times t. So subbing in that t, we replace it with a 4 over 3 cosine theta. And then I have this last term, this quadratic term, 4.9 times t squared. So 4.9 times a 4 over 3 cosine theta all squared. Okay, so we can clean things up a little bit and then try to get a grip on how to solve this thing. Like I noticed, for example, sine over cosine, I could call that tangent and we'll clean up the numbers as we go. We can cancel a three here, giving me a 10 and times four, that gives me 40. So I end up with 12 equals 40 tangent theta. And then our quadratic term is going to be a 4.9 times four squared over three squared, which is 16 ninths times one over cosine squared, but one over cosine is the secant function and it's advantageous to write it this way, secant squared theta, because I know there's an identity relating secant squared and tangent squared, and that could allow us to write this entire thing in terms of tangents. So just as a quick reminder, the identity relating these guys is one plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta. And so we can replace that secant squared 
with a 1 plus tangent squared. That gets us here. And as I'm writing this down, I'm going to go ahead and smash the numbers in that quadratic term, the 4.9 times 16 over 9. So we're using decimal approximations anyway. We may as well replace that with an 8.711, just keeping a few sig figs there. And our secant squared is a 1 plus tangent squared. So then the strategy is that we have a quadratic equation if we treat tangent theta as the variable. So I'm going to rearrange this with a positive coefficient on the quadratic term and put everything over to the left-hand side. It's just going to be easier to look at this way. So I end up with an 8.711 tangent squared theta on the left-hand side. All I did there was distribute that negative 8.711 and then add that quadratic tangent term to both sides. My linear term on the left-hand side will become a negative 40 tangent theta. And then my constant, well, I have a negative 8.711 on the right side of the equation. So when I move that to the left, I'm adding that to 12 and I get 20.711. And that's all equal to zero. So we've arranged this in the standard form to apply the quadratic formula. And again, our variable is tangent theta. So this means tangent theta is the negative of our linear coefficient. So that's going to be a 40 plus or minus 40 squared minus 4 times our leading coefficient, normally called a, so 8.711, times our constant, also called c, 20.711. That whole thing has to be divided by twice the coefficient of the quadratic term. So we're dividing by 2 times 8.711. And when we smash the numbers into a calculator, we get two solutions, which we expected to get. And that's 0 0.595 together with 3.99. Seven. So that smaller one is going to correspond to the smaller launch angle, and the bigger one is going to correspond to the bigger launch angle. But we still have to invert the tangent function to get our final answers here. So we'll just move back up to the top to finish things out here. And I have tangent theta is equal to either one of these numbers. Those are going to correspond to our minimum and maximum values of theta. So theta min, my small angle, is going to be the angle whose tangent is 0 0.595, in other words, an inverse tangent of 0.595. And when I run the numbers on this to three significant digits, I get 30.8 degrees. Now the maximum angle for which we land on top of the ledge, that's the angle whose tangent is 3.997. I just noticed at the bottom of the screen here, I put an extra nine in there, not gonna make a big difference, but anyway, it was 3.997. And when we approximate this angle to three significant digits, we get 76.0 degrees. So to properly state our answer here, we should probably write down an interval. So it's going to be 30.8 degrees to 76.0 degrees. And we put a nice box around it and we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.